Our guest in this segment is S. Christian Anders. He is a candidate in the 97th. That is an open seat right now, uh, where at least it will be when John Hardy's term is over. And John is running for county commission, not for the House of Delegates again. And Chris is the Republican nominee for that seat. Chris, good morning, sir. How are you? Oh, good morning, Rob. Doing pretty good this morning. Uh, good morning, Matt. Good morning, Bill. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be on today. Good it's morning. actually John. Bill's not here today. John Gilstrap, my apologies. Oh, John. Sorry. Okay. I didn't introduce <laughs> John there. I just said good morning to Matt. John I just kind of appeared. He, he kind of hurt my feelings. He just so, assumed honestly, yeah. I was yeah. kissing up the Bill right <laughs> from his face. <laughs> Well, I certainly did not mean to hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's too late. It's already happened. And, uh, questions okay. just got and I'm in your right district, now. man. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's not, you don't want to offend the district voter, right? Uh, <laughs> exactly. Chris, good to have you with us here. I would have loved to have you in studio. I know that wasn't possible this morning, so maybe uh, another time. Uh, your opponent, uh, the Democrat, Lucia Valentine, uh, was on the show about a week and a half ago. And uh, it's good to hear your voice. Both of you have agreed to participate in our candidate forums, which are coming up on October the 15th and 22nd. We appreciate that, too. Uh, Chris, let's talk about uh, you winning an election here in the 97th. As I understand it, this is a district that's fairly evenly divided, give or take, with Republicans, Independents, and Democrats. Is that correct? Well, it's roughly, uh, well, not roughly. I've actually pulled all the data. We're running, it's about 40% Republican now, 30% Democrat, and, of course, 30% uh, Independents, uh, which tend to, if you look at in the election data, they tend to break uh, Republican. Uh, if you look at the 2022 data, which is the most recent uh, information available, uh, because with the redistricting, when everything was changed, you really have to go back precinct by precinct to go back to a, a, a presidential election in 2020. Uh, but overall, it's, it's, it's trending more Republican uh, than it was previously. All right. So let's talk about some of the things that are important to you in the state of West Virginia in regards to what your focus would be should you get elected to this seat. Absolutely, absolutely. As, as you know, I'm a strict constitutionalist. I think every time I've been on your radio show, I've talked about the Constitution at least six or seven times each interview. Indeed. You probably have a side bet. How many times is Chris going to mention the Constitution? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a big believer in uh, uh, the Constitution, individual liberty, both economic and personal liberty. Uh, a lot of times people gloss over the economic liberty portion, but unless you have the money to uh, uh, to take care of yourself, you're never actually truly, truly free. For example, like our founding fathers fought the revolution uh, partially uh, or a good bit of it over a 2% tax on tea. But now the average West Virginian spends about 30% of their gross income on government. Um, when you add up all the taxes, fees, licenses, permits, so on and so on and so on. Uh, so actually the people have less money in hand to take care of themselves and their family. So what happens is, you know, that money goes to government, government takes a portion of it and then doles it back and politicians use a lot of that money to buy votes for their next election. I don't, you know, I believe in the people over, over government and everything I can do to reduce the taxes and put money back to the people of the 97th district, I absolutely will. I mean, some people have asked me, you know, you're running for office, you know, what gifts are you bringing to the 97th district? I'm like, well, I'm not Santa Claus. That's not my job. My job is to preserve the Constitution, preserve their liberty, and try to get them as much of their money back. What role should government play at the state level? Because this is the office you're running for, state level, not federal level, so I don't want to confuse the two. Right. Right. What? Well, what? Well, obviously, it is a job, if you read the Constitution or anything the Founding Fathers wrote, it's a job of any elected official to protect the liberty, the, but first of all, protect the individual life, protect the individual liberty, and protect private property rights. That is the moral job of government. Uh, it's not to dole out gifts. It's not to prop up corporations with crony capitalism. It's not to interfere in the lives of the constituents to the point that pretty much everything you do, everything you have in your house is regulated by government. It's the job to protect their liberty, their life, their liberty, and their property, which includes the money they make. And it's always ironic, you know, we keep running into these budget, quote-unquote, budget surpluses or shortfalls or whatever's happening in Charleston. It's, it's always interesting 
the way they do the budget. But the money never goes back to the taxpayers. Uh, politicians take the left, quote unquote, leftover money and they dole it out to their friends and 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 their uh, their cronies instead of you know putting it back where it belongs. Considering the inflation that we're all facing today, which is some of the most uh, ridiculous inflation we've seen in a very, very long time. And it's the most, it's actually a tax. Inflation is a tax on government spending. The more government spends, the more money it has to print. The more money it prints, the less the money's worth. And this really hurts the lower middle classes worse because it impacts them directly. When you go to the grocery store and you can't afford to to buy the food you could three years ago, or, but, but know, Chris, those, every, those are every, those are federal issues, and there's nothing that a member of the House of Delegates can do to curb inflation caused by the federal government. Well, obviously, no. Obviously, you cut spending. Right now, but let me go you, back you here because you spending. you mentioned right. that you mentioned that that the the officials never return the money to the taxpayer. But we had a 21.25 percent state income tax reduction recently. Another four yes. percent trigger was just hit, and the governor just called a special session at the end of this month to try to push through another five percent on top of that. Would that not qualify as giving the money back to the taxpayers? That is working to get the money back, but when there's budget surpluses left over and they're doing things like spending, I, I forget the exact number, but it's millions of dollars to put in a, a mountain bike trail uh, somewhere in West Virginia, I don't think that's a proper use of the people's money. Get the money back to them. Uh, so, yes, um, you know, we need to get as much of the money back to the people. They can't afford this economy. There's people, you know, I've been out talking to voters. I've, I've knocked on thousands of doors. And I'm hearing they can't afford to pay for their medications. They can't afford or they're, they're sacrificing getting their prescriptions to be able to pay for food on the table. Um, that's a real, real problem. So, you know, the less money government takes from the people, and I will always push for less and less and less money. In fact, I think we ought to eliminate the personal income tax in West Virginia. Many states have done so. In fact, I visited South uh, Dakota about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. They have no personal property tax, and they have no personal income tax either. Um, you know, we need to get the money. It's, it's a matter of do you trust government or do you trust the people? I trust the people. I want to get the money back to the people, not give it the government to dole out as gifts. Mr. Gilstrap, you are in the 97th. Go. So as a practical matter, uh, taking that theory and, and putting it to use, there's a uh, large housing development that's planned along Cedar Lane and Swan Pond uh, Road in that area, in, in your district. Um, those roads are entirely inadequate there's really nothing the way everything is structured there's there's no stopping it we don't have zoning and there's there's really no way for the planning commission to stop it if if it meets certain check boxes so with those roads being essentially one's a, like a, a little trail and one is an a inadequate road is it okay for tax money to be spent to improve those roads well obviously but it should be more controlled at the county level i'll give you an example of this uh, where I live, um, uh, I live at the intersection of Weinbrenner and Golf Course Road. Um, there have been multiple vehicle accidents. There's been three or four this year. Uh, the houses and my neighbors, we've had our fences knocked down and multiple times outside of that. And trying to get the state road department to even do anything about it has been next to impossible. The county's been very responsive. But more of that needs to go at the county level, more local control over the roads than have to, you know, go into Charleston. But let's face it, the eastern panhandle, we end up shipping so much money down to the capital, and we get very, very little back uh, compared to the, we're basically the cash cow uh, for the rest of the state. And so my goal is to have less money go to Charleston and more money stay here. But as I understand, the way the roads pretty much all belong to the state, not to the county. Is that right? With limited that exceptions, correct. that is correct. So within that structure, we would need to be spending state money to improve the roads or expand the roads in that in any area where there's going to be large development. Unless we change the structure, right? That's the key. Again, uh, does, does a bureaucrat in Charleston know what's happening in the 97th district? Not necessarily. Probably not at all compared to someone who would be uh, here in Berkeley County. But, you know, we have a lot of problems outside of roads. But, yes, we do have, I mean, every time I go to Lowe's and, and drive 45, 
uh, that that is a bit frustrating too. That is a real mess down there too with traffic. And uh, as we see more and more people moving to West Virginia because of our West Virginia values and our West Virginia way of life, this is something we're going to have to address. And I think there needs to be more local control over the roads because they're here and they know what's going on. So is that the legislation? Is is that legislation that you plan to introduce? Yes, that would that would be one one part of the legislation I would put in. I'd also have to address our school issues. We have uh, real issues with our schools. Uh, we also have a huge issue, uh, and nobody ever talks about this locally. Uh, it's always a national issue, but we've had a lot of problems with the illegal immigrants here uh, within the district, including. Uh, a murder within the district, and a lady of Samantha Daly's body set on fire literally half a mile from my house. Uh, we have a real problem with illegal crime as well. Uh, there's a lot of things we have to address, uh, whether it's uh, you know vaccine freedom, allowing parents to decide uh, what's put into their children, whether it's um, the school system. And, yes, people keep talking about locality pay. Sure, yeah, that's a Band-Aid for now. But we really need to move to a full and complete school choice model. Um, there, there are a ton of issues uh, that we need to address. West Virginia is much better off than Maryland and Virginia at this point, uh, and people are moving here. And the vast majority, from the data I've, I've come across, are conservatives, people looking to live in a more conservative manner. Uh, so we definitely don't want to become Loudoun County, and we definitely don't want to become Maryland, which is something my opponent is, is all in favor of. So, you know, what, what does that mean? Forward. What does that mean in practicality that she's in favor of West Virginia becoming Maryland, Chris? Well, first of all, the debate I had is Shepard. She's in favor of taxpayer funded abortion. She supports the transgender gender insanity. Uh, she supports the Green New Deal. Uh, she's all about Maryland style gun control um, and even wants to use taxpayer dollars to uh, pay for food for college students. Um, all that came out in the debate that we had back before the primary. I'm sorry that, you know, that that's not West Virginia. Uh, those type of uh, issues, that's very radical uh, for West Virginia. Um, and, you know, if you, if you look at, you know, currently she's running trying to portray herself as a moderate, but she's not. Uh, if you look at her real stances on these on these very important issues, and I'm sure she would have, if you ask her about the uh, about the illegal immigration problem, um, I'm not sure she'd have an answer to that. What answer does any delegate or state senator in West Virginia have for an illegal immigration problem that would effectively matter? Well, you just take a look at Texas. I mean, Texas actually started uh, making it a a Texas state crime to be here because. You know, illegally. Let's let's face it. Um, the federal government is not securing our border. They're not doing their job. That's one of the constitutional duties of the federal government. So we here at the state level then need to fill the gap. And you can, you know, uh, following Texas lead, you can actually make it a West Virginia state crime to be here illegally. The person, the gentleman who killed Samantha Daly, uh, right here in the district, uh, had been caught by the fed, federal government twice and released. You know, they play catch and release. They're supposed to show up for court later. And not only do we have the, the murder here, uh, about two months ago, we had an uh, individual uh, stabbed a jogger and attempted rape. Uh, a female jogger was stabbed by another illegal. Um, we're starting to have real problems right here. I mean, if you look at what's happening in Ohio or Colorado, there's all types of, uh, you know, talk about, you know, what's going on out there. You know, a lot of it's hype. I you know, I don't know if they're eating cats or not. Who knows? But, you know, we have a real problem because they've left the border wide open, and it's actually coming here now. Matt Harvey or John, if you had a follow-up. Go ahead, John, if you had a follow-up. Uh, on the illegal immigration thing, again, as a practical matter, I would agree that illegal is illegal, and we shouldn't support things that are illegal. However, if we waved a magic wand and we said everybody who's illegal is gone, what really happens to the construction industry, right? <laughs> I, 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 seriously, I mean, th who's there, most of that labor, particularly the real grunt labor that's going on, meaning no insult by saying grunt, um, it is, is done by illegals. Uh, so what then happens to that? There's kind of a wink and a nod thing that, that's been going on forever. Well, yeah, and it's unfortunate because if you look at the uh, the unemployment rates and the workforce participation rates, West Virginia ranks near the uh, bottom of the country. Um, you you can say, okay, well, we'll just you know 
you know, not look at the illegal immig- immigration problem because we need them to do stuff for us. I'm sorry, that's not the answer. The answer is they're taking jobs away from some of our lower, uh, lower middle class uh, residents here in West Virginia. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, I, I have seen it myself. I've seen builders, and maybe the big builders love having you know illegal immigrants working for them, but it's still wrong. It poses a danger to the people of the 97th district and is taking jobs away from our citizens. I would I would agree that illegal is illegal. Um, I think that the illegals are being hired because the 50 percent who are participating in the workforce versus the 50 percent who aren't, Chris. I don't think those folks are taking those jobs. I just don't think those people want to participate. We, well, if, because government has enabled them not to. If, if you want to blame the people, which I never blame the people, uh, people's uh, uh, how they interact has a lot to do with government policy. Currently in West Virginia, and I've talked to a lot of small business owners, if you go to work for them for three or four days and quit your job, quit, quit your job, and you file for unemployment, they're getting unemployment. I'm sorry, unemployment was not meant to pay for people to sit at home because they decided to quit a job. Okay, that's really hurting. You know, how many restaurants, how many small businesses do you go past that have these help wanted signs? And everybody's, you know, looking for help. Um, and, and so what's happening is people are being paid not to work out of choice. You know, unemployment was originally intended that if someone lost their job because the company failed, uh, it was due to no fault of their own, then government would help them for a very short period of time. But come the great COVIDing, you know, they started expanding unemployment to the point that someone can go to work, like I said, for three, four, five days quit the job because they decide they don't want to work anymore and go back and get all these unemployment benefits. That has to change, too. You know, it's taking money from me and you and everybody else who's out working, taking their money and giving it to someone because they don't want to work. That is not fair to uh, to the businesses, and that's not fair to the taxpayer. Matt Harvey. Uh, Chris, who kind of going back, we, we – brushed on this the surplus that west virginia has um what would you do with that keeping in mind that the first two months of this year there is no surplus okay any government surplus should be immediately refunded back to the taxpayers period okay politicians should not use taxpayer money to pick winners and losers give money to their friends and business or give money to build bike trails or anything that's beyond the scope of government. Okay, government's supposed to protect your individual life, your individual liberty, and your private property, and that includes the money you make. And so if there's any surplus, that should be automatically refunded back to the people because the people know best how to spend their money. Government does not. Do you think that this surplus, uh, should some of it should be directed towards the foster system or any other deficiencies that the state has at this well, current a, time? I mean, currently we have a lot of deficiencies because we've been spending a lot of money on things we should not have. There are things, whether we had problems with our jail system, uh, we have problems with our school system, you know, all of those fall under the auspices of, of government. For foster care, you know, absolutely in a situation like that, uh, we don't want to see uh, children in a bad situation. But what's even more important than that is, you know, I keep hearing the debate over child care and government paying child care. Why don't you just give the money back to the people? Let the people take care of their own children. It's not the government's job. It's the, you know, it's the parents. So give the money back to them to do so. Um, we, we pray at the altar of government way too much. Our country was founded, and I've always been – a strict proponent of our founding principles. It was founded to provide free and independent people the ability to live their lives how they wish. And we need to go back to that instead of always praying at the altar government and asking government to take care of us from the cradle to the grave because the more government can give you, the more power it has over you. Two minutes left. Matt, final question. Yes. Uh, I want to swing back to the roads issue. Um, is is that it? 
in the West Virginia Constitution that the state will take care of the roads, or is that something that can be addressed by statute? Well, I, I have, I've never actually, to be honest, I've never looked to see if it's directly in the Constitution. I have a feeling uh, that that you know there is probably something about turnpikes. Because keep in mind, you know, our, our our state was created in 1863, back on the, what my grandmother used to call the late unpleasantness. Uh, and, uh, uh, but I'm sure there's, you know, just like everything in West Virginia, everything's so state controlled, whether it's the education system, whether it's the road system, everything is controlled out of Charleston. People in Charleston don't know what's happening here in Berkeley County. And so sending that power back to the county, plus those elected officials at the county level have much greater voter accountability than some bureaucrats sitting in Charleston. I believe the, the state took back the control the roads in the 30s but i don't know if it was by statute or put in the constitution i think you're correct matt after the depression or during it yeah because the counties couldn't afford to, to pay the... for the roads and in talking with the berkeley county commissioners in the past they have zero interest in wanting to have to fund the roads in berkeley county well, matt, hey chris <laughs> chris i got 60 okay. seconds by the way they are yours to close out with Okay, absolutely. Well, I appreciate, you know, you guys having me on today. I'm looking forward to the debates. I'm having uh, the debate at WRNR with my opponent also uh, at the Stubblefield Institute mm -hmm. um, and Shepherd, and also uh, We the People of Jefferson County is hosting a debate next month. Uh, I will be participating in. Um, I'm looking forward to serving the people of the 97th District and fighting to get their money and their freedom back and doing everything I can to address the issues that we're facing from schools, uh, to uh, inflation, to, you know, this uh, illegal invasion. We have to, you know, start working more at the state level to address this because we are a republic, and as such, it is the duty of the state representatives, as Jefferson and Madison both said, to address these problems. Chris, thanks for coming on, man. Always a pleasure speaking with you.